Hello, welcome to 18th Century Cooking. My name is Ryan Kerr. Today we're working on a recipe that's a little bit different for the channel. It's a chicken curry right out of the 18th century, and I think it's gonna be delicious. Thank you for joining me today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Sometimes when you're going through 18th century cookbooks, you want something to jump off the page and grab you, and it doesn't always happen whether it's because everything feels like it's a version of something that you've done before, or maybe that day you're just not in the right headspace to look for recipes. There were a couple people on the crew that offered to help. They said, hey, I could do this sometime. So I decided to take them up on it. And Caleb found this really, really neat recipe for Indian curry. We've never done that before. So I thought, okay, that's it. Let's give it a try. That's what brings us here. And it's interesting because now as a family, you know, each individual person probably lives in close enough proximity in the U.S. to find good Indian food, or at least Indian food. In the 18th century, they, they couldn't just go to a restaurant and order it. So they needed to be able to make it at home. So that's what's cool about this recipe is it's an English cookbook and they're trying to say, I want to have something exotic. I want to experience flavor profiles that I'm not used to. And this is, this is an English person that's taking an Indian curry recipe, putting it in her cookbook, probably putting her own spin on it. I'm not really sure. It'd be really neat to find an actual Indian curry recipe from the time period in India, but we haven't come across that. So this is the best we can do. And I think it's a really good try. This recipe comes from Hannah Glass's The Art of Cookery. We've used this book a ton. If you're looking for a cookbook that gets you into 18th century cooking really easily, this is the one. Buy it. It's fun. All right. So this is to make curry the Indian way. Take two small chickens, skin them, and cut them as for a fricassee. Wash them clean and stew them in about a quart of water for about five minutes. Then strain off the liquor and put the chickens in a clean dish. Take three large onions, chop them small, and fry them in about two ounces of butter. Then put in the chicken and fry them together till they are brown. Take a quarter of an ounce of turmeric, a large spoonful of ginger and beaten pepper together, and a little salt to your palate. Strew them all the ingredients over the chicken whilst it is frying. Then pour in your liquor and let it stew about half an hour. Then put in a quarter of a pint of cream and the juice of two lemons and serve it up. The ginger, pepper, and turmeric must be beaten very fine. That's it. It's a pretty simple recipe. What we need to do for this is to break down this chicken. It calls for a, two whole chickens. Our chickens are larger than they were in the time period. I did get the smallest one that I could find, but it's still a sizable chicken. So we're gonna go through the steps to break this down real quick. Then we'll get it all cut up small and get cooking. I've broken down the chicken. It's ready to go. For this particular recipe, I'm not gonna worry about the wings. Um, put those aside, you can use them for something else. Obviously, everything that you discard is good for chicken stock. Don't waste it, make some stock, it's delicious. Right now, I've got the breasts and the legs. So we've got white meat, we've got dark meat. I'm gonna go ahead and get the meat off of the legs and we're gonna cut everything up small so they can go in the skillet and just turn into, well, what they call is a, a fricassee, but really you just want small chunks of chicken. Get the chicken all chopped up here, it's the small pieces. Now what the recipe calls for is for us to put this in about a quart of water for about five minutes. And really what we're doing there is we're starting a broth, we're making a quick broth. We're gonna pour that off later and store it to the side until the end of the recipe. But right now we just gotta get it hot. Our chicken is in there stewing away. It's gonna be in there for about five minutes. In the meantime, we can go ahead and get our onions ready. So the one thing I like about this recipe is that I love food that has 
a lot of spices. And there are different recipes that we've done on the channel that have made me really happy. Kitchen pepper was one of them. Uh, at one time we did a recipe called pepper pot and that was a Caribbean take that an uh, English cookbook had. If I remember right, it was English. At any rate, people are trying to experience these highly spiced foods. And I think that oftentimes, in, when we think about 18th century, not only do we think of all the clothing being kind of brown or green, kind of earthen tones, but we also think that people were boring and that they didn't like spice and they didn't like a lot of things that they in fact did like. When we were at Mount Vernon, when we did the fried catfish recipe, there was a ton of cayenne pepper in that. People liked that. People like high spiced foods, foods that just kind of reach you out and slap you when, before you eat them because that's fun. And you're just like really experiencing all of these different things and it's making your taste buds go, oh yeah, there's, there's something happening here. All right, so we just strained the liquid off of the chicken. It's staying in the bowl back there, and that's gonna be used later in the recipe. Right now, we need to get some butter and onions in this pan, start frying it up. Then we'll add the chicken and the spices. It's gonna be great. So what's interesting here is that I, I wouldn't think that just five minutes of that chicken in the water would create such a rich looking broth already. But this is, you can already see the oils in here. You can see it working. And then we're gonna put this back in later so it gets to stew in that for another half hour. So we're creating quite a complex broth that we're gonna add heavy cream and spices to. So this thing should be full of flavor. I'm really excited about it. I was really surprised when I added all those spices in there and started stirring and that color popped. That turmeric and ginger just turned everything like a yellowish, orange kind of thing. Looks a lot like curry that I know today. So I'm really excited about this. I think it's gonna work out really well. The room is just filling with the aromatics of all that. It smells so good in here. Then I poured in the broth. That's gonna stew for about a half hour. Then we'll get the cream and the lemon juice in there and it'll be ready to go. In the meantime, we're gonna make some rice. The rice recipe that followed this recipe in the cookbook was just basically cook some rice. Once we get the rice finished, we'll get that in the bottom of a bowl. The curry is gonna go right on top of this and I cannot wait to try it. This smells incredible. We got the rice finished up. We've got a little bit of rice in here on the bottom and the curry on top. All of the aromatic notes are, are really, really great. I hope that it tastes as good as it smells.
That's good. That's really good. And I was afraid that the chicken was going to overcook, but it's super tender. It's really, really good. Sometimes when they do this scenario where, where some meat is twice cooked, then it can get tough. But this is perfect. It stood in there a long time. Tastes really good. The ginger isn't popping out nearly as much as I thought that it would. We could add a little bit more, give it a little bit more kick. I put plenty of black pepper in there. The lemon is what gets you. And that, along with the cream, is kind of unfamiliar. Um, usually, you, you, you think cream and you think heavy, but this doesn't eat super heavy. The lemon aromatics come through right away. And uh, I don't know, it's just there's something comforting about it. It's really good. So growing up in the Midwest, a lot of times when I think about Indian food and people around me think about Indian food, they automatically think it's spicy. This is not spicy. It's just very full. And the ginger doesn't give you a hot note, um, but it's there. I don't, I can't pick out the turmeric, but I think that I think that the spices are just coming together in a way that they're making a blend all of their own. And the way that we mixed it together, it, it was kind of like when you make a rub. So all these things just come together and they cook together for a long time. So it's, it's really full. There's not a boring bite. Um, it's not like I'm looking for, oh, I want a piece of chicken or I need to get a certain amount of rice. Just every spoonful has a very consistent, nice flavor to it. If you're making this at home, do not skip the lemon. That is the treat. That is what's really great here. We made this, I was, I was trying to prepare for this, this episode. So I actually made this for my family last night and everybody really liked it. We have curry, I don't know. We probably make curry once every few weeks at our house. And this is the recipe that they want to switch to. It's really, really good. Um, I don't know what to say about its accuracy to Indian cooking in the time period. Like I said, this recipe is coming from an English cookbook. So they're playing with those flavors, but I can't say that this is uh, exactly the recipe that folks in India would be making. If you know anything about that in the comment section, make sure to weigh in on that. We're all working together here to educate ourselves, to learn more about history. If you've got something to say about that, I really encourage you, don't hold your comments back, get them in there. Um, but this, as far as curry that I know, this is on point, this tastes like curry. And um, I've never had one that had that citrus aromatic thing going on as much as this, which is really nice. It's so much fun when we have an opportunity on this channel to get outside of the normal realm of what we make. We do a lot of English cooking, we do some French cooking and some other European cooking. So we do a lot of pies and, and soups and different dishes that are familiar to us already. This is something special. If you want to see another episode where we kind of get outside of our comfort zone and we try something from another place, check out this video on Pepper Pot. It's from the Caribbean and it is delicious. Thank you for watching today.